Frederik Flöter. It's the first quantum symposium in Basel. What is your impression you have of it? I think my main impression is being wowed by the sheer caliber of uh, talent and uh, people from all over the world. It's called the US Switzerland Quantum Symposium, but we even have people from Chile who traveled all the way here in order to attend and give talks. So I think this is really one key aspect, all the people together with all these uh, cutting edge topics. You're also in that field of quantum technology. Is it also very motivational to see all those people come together, think together, listen together to the same things? Absolutely. I think um, quantum, yes, it's definitely growing. There's a lot of talk about it, but at the end of the day, um, it is still not yet, uh, you know, in every corner of society, so to speak. So, yes, it is great to see when people who come together, who work on this uh, from all over the world can exchange ideas all in one place. If something new happens, grows, it's kind of a feeling of community. Do you have this as well in this quantum field? I think so, because even though, yes, there are different organizations and of course there's also a certain uh, degree between some organizations, certain degree of competition, but at the end of the day, we all want to bring the technology forward. We all want to use the technology to do useful, exciting things for society. And as a result, yes, I think it's, uh, once again, it's great when people can exchange ideas and then hopefully progress the field together with that. Frederik Flöter, you work for Quantum Basel. What exactly is Quantum Basel? Can you shortly explain this? Yes, so Quantum Basel, I would say it's a unique um, concept, vision, so it includes on the one hand it is part of the overall Uptown Basel um, innovation hub, so with real physical buildings that are being created and Quantum Basel is the technology heart uh, of that hub. So what we do is we uh, create access and enable partners to use these um, next generation technologies, including artificial intelligence, including quantum computing and quantum technologies. And as such, uh, we ensure that uh, the ecosystem understands and can use these technologies for um, exciting projects. People who are interested in this technology, who come to your place, ask questions, what is their um, main thing they have to get over to get into that technology? Yeah, so I, I, I like to think of quantum, it's not just uh, a next form of computing, but I like to think of it more as a quantum state of mind. So it's a different way of looking at problems, a different way of thinking about them. And so you're asking what is the first thing that they need to think about? Well. It is understanding how, uh, what the, the potentials, what the opportunities, but also perhaps threats are associated with this new form uh, of technology. And so it is really understanding some of the basics, what it can do, but very importantly also what it cannot do, and what sort of timeframes we're talking about as this technology continues to mature, and what are the best steps that can be taken today. You're young. 33 years old and you are in that quantum field for about 10 years. What fascinates you about it? So for me, on the one hand, obviously there's the technology and what it can already do and will be able to do in the future. But on the other hand, for me, there's also everything that's associated with it, the philosophical implications of how we look at, uh, at the world, the ethical implications, um, the impact it uh, will hopefully have uh, on society. So there's a whole uh, set of uh, aspects around it which um, are not always at the forefront, but which I think are just as important. You are lead quantum and deputy CEO at Quantum. Can you tell me what exactly you do? Yes, so I'm responsible for the hubs, uh, quantum activities, operations and ecosystem. So I work with partners uh, to determine if and how quantum computing uh, can make a difference, uh, can affect uh, what they are doing in their organization. And I also act as advisor to these collaborations in order to help drive 
cutting edge research and uh, exploration of the technology. As a scientist, you worked long time for uh, IBM in the industry. Are you kind of a uh, bridge builder between basic research and industry referring to quantum technology? I like to think of myself as a bridge builder, yes. I think uh, it is not so easy to connect the foundational research together with the commercial, the business uh, applications. And uh, very often um, these two areas, not quite the same language is spoken. And so I think it is important that one can make these connections in order to really uh, cross fertilize, to use the research, yes, to drive applications, but likewise to use what is happening in organizations and in the market in order to inform the foundational research. If I listen to you and I look at you if you talk about it i see so much also love to what you do yes i think <laughs> it's uh it's it's a fitting world i think quantum unfortunately many people think of it as this abstract thing and uh, which no one quite understands perhaps but at the same time there's a real uh there's a mystery there it has a at its heart some some incredible uh, potential for applications which could revolutionize society, think new drugs, think uh, new solutions and logistics problems or discovery of new materials. And on top of that, as I said, it's a whole new way of uh, uh, looking at the world and understanding what reality is. You named just some examples. Can you give us some more examples what quantum technology can do directly into our lives. So just to be clear, it's still a young technology. So when we talk about these use cases, we are looking at the future. And there are, it's really problems where with classical methods, we just cannot quite solve them. Very often these are problems with um, a, a myriad of potential solutions which are computationally very intensive uh, to test on with classical machines. And so, for instance, in healthcare life sciences, it's finding the right diagnosis and treatment for a given patient, which is a very individual thing. And uh, that's uh, today we're still not as far as we would like to be. It's in manufacturing, um, being able to Uh, f find new materials that we can use as we progress towards a sustainable future and build better batteries, of course. Um, it is in, I mentioned logistics, so optimizing routes and uh, how can we best ensure supply chains uh, function. So there's quite a wide range of applications. We don't quite know yet which ones will uh, come first, which ones will come later, but there's certainly a lot of potential in a lot of industries. We are talking about chances a lot. Do you also see risks? Yes, I think the one that's most often talked about is in the whole security area. So quantum, some of the quantum algorithms, they have the potential actually to threaten and uh, decrypt current protocols and standards. Now, the timeline there as to when this will happen is also not quite clear yet. So estimates range from years to decades, uh, but still it is more a question of uh, when and how as opposed to if, or at least um, that's, that's what many people think nowadays. And so that's a clear risk, but it's something given that we're aware of it, we can now already prepare. So I think that's one risk. Of course, there are other risks you can consider, for instance, understanding the technology properly, um, given that it is uh, rather abstract, there are misconceptions. So people expecting perhaps too much or too little, not quite knowing what it can and cannot do. And so these are all, all other risks around it. Um, yes. To the end, let's talk about Uptown Basel. Um, this place, what meaning do you give to it? How, how important is it for quantum technology in the area, but maybe also in the world? I think a unique aspect about quantum Basel and something I mentioned before, I like to look at quantum holistically, 
And the unique aspect about Quantum Basel and Uptown Basel is also this holistic development. I talked about the real estate, I talked about the, uh, the connection with the technology. And Quantum Basel is really at the core of, of what is trying to be done here is that we connect these foundational advances with um, with impactful industry applications. Um, we talked about this bridge is not easy, it's not quite so easy to be done. And also with uh, the symposium, uh, we can see here, uh, it goes very much in that direction where we have both of these sites coming together in order to progress uh, uh, the field together. If you look at the future, um, if quantum is mostly implemented in our everyday life, how does our life look like? You know, it may not actually be, uh, we may not actually be quite so aware of it. So when quantum is running really smoothly, just um, a number of things will become possible that were not possible before, but we might not even recognize, oh, it's a quantum computer running in the background. And so to talk about the medical example, that um, you may get uh, much more personalized treatments from your doctor. Your doctor might not say, oh, a quantum computer helped calculate that, but of course you will be glad that <laughs> uh, you now have the personalized medication. And I think there will be many uh, examples like that. Maybe these are more longer term, but uh, where, where problems can be solved, which previously we considered intractable. Frederik Flöte, thank you so much for you being here and talk about all that. Thank you for having me.